always called him the largest, nicest man in the world. All alone, betrayed and adrift. He's one of the nicest guys I ever met because he doesn't have a malice in him. I'd like to give you a physical examination. Let's get physical. <laughs> he had a really instant effect on people. I think Kevin embodied generosity. He seemed to be so giving of everything. Great thing going on there. That's nice and slow. Thank you. It was very easy to think of Kevin as, as a superstar, but underneath that, there was this human being who was um, appreciative and and kind. Kevin Smith, Kev, was probably best known as an actor, a very handsome, acclaimed lead actor. But he was also extraordinarily witty, amazingly gifted musically, and an all-round entertainer. He'd already achieved incredible success, and he was on the verge of another break, a major Hollywood role playing alongside Bruce Willis. But on February the 16th, 2002, after an accidental fall on a film set, he died. This is our tribute to Kev, our colleague. Our friend. Let's go make a family. They will Kevin Todd Smith was born in Auckland on March 16, 1963. The first child for his parents, Yvonne and Jeff. Two years later, his younger sister, Sandy, was born. Kevin's dark looks came from his Tongan heritage on his mother's side. His dad, Jeff, was in the Navy, and Kevin spent his first ten years growing up on Auckland's North Shore. The family moved to Sydney briefly, but then in 1974 they moved to Timaru, close to Jeff's family, and it was there that Kevin spent the rest of his childhood. Kev had a really good relationship with his parents, as did his sister. And I spent, when we were young, I spent a lot of time at Kev's place, because Kev's parents really were cool. They treated you like a human being more than a kid. Kev's father was musical. Whenever he went round to visit the Smiths, Kev's father was as often as not, sitting on the couch with a guitar playing Kenny Rogers songs. Kev went to Timaru Boys High School. It was a traditional school with an emphasis on sports and academic success. But Kev's interests lay more with the arts. Kev mixed in a certain circle, and they were people who were slightly artistic, slightly musical, just slightly a bit different to the norm. In 78, Kev met his future wife, Sue. They were both just 15, and their mums engineered their first date. Our mums worked together at a uh, at an old person's home, and uh, yeah, they jacked up a because uh, um, they, they live around the corner from us, you know. So they uh, they jacked up. Uh, they needed. Um, we went to a wedding. Just so, oh, just just go along together. So twenty years later, they. Uh, I don't want to get cliched about it, but they were childhood sweethearts, and they um they were always together. They they I mean they stayed together for the duration. After leaving school, Kev moved to Christchurch, but he struggled, missing Sue, who'd remained in Timaru. It was a very bad year for Kev. He didn't really, he didn't really give a toss about anything. It was, yeah, it was hard for Sue to be part. In Christchurch, Kev dabbled at university, worked in a grain store and sang in a band called Say Yes to Apes. Music was his passion and performing his forte. The place that you'd see Kev most often was in someone's, someone's backyard playing a guitar. That uh, would be so normal in Christchurch. You know, all my memories of Kev, the one thing that always just sticks there is just how beautifully he sang Elvis. And if you close your eyes when Kev was singing Elvis, there's no way I could ever pick that it wasn't. Although acting was to become the central focus of Kev's career, he always found time for music. He sang in theatre, concerts in the park, and in the mid-90s he was part of the celebrity band, The Wide Lapels. Kev's musical talents were just one aspect of his gifts as a performer. Back in Christchurch in the mid-80s, the world of television was beckoning ever so slightly. 
Well, you'd have to say that Crime Watch was Kev's first lead role. What had happened was somebody had robbed a massage parlour and they wanted somebody to play this large guy who who robbed the massage parlour. So they gave him the job and they took him down to the massage parlour to meet the um, the guy who was actually robbed. And, and the way the story goes, the guy took one look at Kev and pointed at him and said, yes, that's him, well done, you've caught him. Not realising that he was actually the actor playing the part. Well, I'm here at Auckland Airport to talk to... It was a small beginning, but it led on to other roles. Rugby megastar John Kerwin. Oh, good eye. John, you've just returned from this amazing, this devastating, this obliterating tour of the land of the rising sun. No, no, I've just come back from Japan. John, not only a great winger, a great wit as well. Kev found it difficult without Sue, lacking focus and direction, but that all changed when Sue and he were reunited in 1984. And at just 21, they were married in their hometown of Timaru. You know, they married young, but they'd already been together for ages. It was no surprise when Kev and Sue got married. It was the most natural thing in the world. It was Sue who steered him to his first theatre role. She saw a casting call for the touring stage show, Are You Lonesome Tonight? Knowing Kev's love of Elvis, she encouraged him to try his luck. And he got to the audition, and, you know, next thing you know, three auditions later, I think he'd travelled around the country to do some more auditions. Kev was the, uh, he had the second lead in the Elvis show, you know, and it, it was amazing. It was very inspirational, you know. It's very much like, well, you can do it, you know. If Kev can do it, we all can do it. The production of Are You Lonesome Tonight wasn't a success and the season closed early. But Kevin had caught the acting bug and wanted to be on stage and he decided to try out for Christchurch's professional theatre, The Court. Well, it was just before lunchtime. It was summer. I think it's the end of 1987. And I was crossing the foyer, and this very good-looking young man came up to me, and he said, you're the director. And I said, yes. And he said, I'd like to know whether I can act. And I took one look at him. I thought, my God, looking like that, one hopes he can. So I never turn anybody away. If I think ten minutes of your life can change somebody else's. So I said to him, go away, prepare an audition speech, and come back again. Well, he came back a couple of days later, and he did the last scene from The Glass Menagerie, that wonderful monologue. And so help me, I sat there in tears. I was very moved. I thought, I'm tired, I'm sick, you know, so easily taken in. Anyway, I sent away for somebody else whose judgment I trust, and they came along, and they were moved as well. I thought, well, we've got an actor on our hands. So I made an offer to him straight away, and he began at the Court Theatre at the beginning of 1988. And it was really learned fast or, or go home sort of thing. Uh, Elric had a profound um, effect on both of their lives and, um, and he, but he's a very hard taskmaster as well, incredibly knowledgeable but also incredibly willing to pass that knowledge on. There was something about his early days with us in the theatre, with all of us at the court theatre, that was like so magical uh, in the fact that his, his, um, his energy infected you. It just brought out the most wonderful things in yourself it, it was it was a really extraordinary uh, place to be when kevin was on fire my husband he had a great gift for comedy because comedy as i suppose it, ultimately it's intellectual it's brains and Kevin was sex and body as well. So he had this incredible range. And to me, he was obviously a major talent. I knew ultimately somebody would come along and whisk him away. Here, I'll come and cover with something. Okay, I'll try, okay? Following a tribute to Kevin Smith, TV2 presents Lawless. I've got it all lined up. I think I'll blow you away. There was an armed holdup of an armoured vehicle. And I bloody will want to know if you were there. It's from that robbery, isn't it? Well, I didn't want you to get involved. John Lawless is a dangerous and desperate man. Kevin Smith, Joel Tobek and Angela Dodgson in Lawless. Following a tribute to Kevin Smith, tonight, TV2. Hey, 